Hey everybody, Jake here, and today we're taking a look at the Kako Retro. I, I think that's how it's pronounced at least. We'll go ahead and go over what I like about it, what I'm kind of neutral towards, what I dislike. But overall, this is a very interesting pen, especially the design of it. I think that's really going to be the main reason that you buy this pen if you're interested at all. On to the size comparison. So at the bottom we have the Kako Retro, then we have the Pilot Metropolitan, the Moonman M2, and the Jinhao X450. So this is about in that same range, maybe just a tad bit longer than most of these other pens in a similar price range. Here's an uncapped size comparison, and you can see it's still basically keeping up with the pack, maybe a little bit longer overall. The hooded nib does account for some of the length, so keep that in mind when you're looking at the size comparison. I tried to match them up fairly close nib tip, so you can kind of see how the backs of the pens line up. And you, your, your grip's going to you know vary on a hooded nib anyway. And here it is posted. So you can see it posts a lot more deeply than any of these other pens. And the length is a bit more tolerable overall. It's, it's a decent bit shorter than the um, Pilot Metropolitan and the Moon Man M2. And quite a bit shorter than the Jinhao X450, which doesn't post very well at all. Alright, on to what I like about it. First thing up is going to be the nib and the flow. So as far as I'm aware... These pens are only offered in one nib size, and that is um, extra fine, at least according to the listing that I found. Extra fine is by far my least favorite nib size, but to be honest, this writes a bit more like a, um, a Western fine, which is interesting. Um, it's a fairly wet flow as well, so that probably helps. But the nib's very good. It's reliable. It is a little bit more feedbacky than I would like. It's nowhere close even to like Sailor or Platinum. But you can tell you're riding with a fine nib and it's not the smoothest fine nib on earth. But it's not scratchy by any means. It's not unpleasant to write with. It's just not my favorite. And it's a little boring, but it is consistent. It is reliable and it has a good flow to it. So I, I like the nib quite a bit. The design though is what really brought me to this pen. So when it's closed, it's, it's a very minimal design and depending on which color scheme you get there are five it's kind of contrasting so you mine at least is like this mint green blue with this orange orangish brown almost um kind of clip ball at the end and i think that adds just a little bit of pop uh, these these pens look fantastic especially just sitting on a table but the design's unique i honestly wish they hadn't gone with a hooded nib i'm not a big fan of hooded nibs for the most part but in this design, I can certainly see it fitting. It kind of keeps with the aesthetic. And the posting on this pen is fantastic. It posts super deeply. I'll take it off here just to show you. So you get, you know, a, a pretty good deep post on this. And this is one of the few pens I actually prefer to write with posted because the balance is so good. And where I hold the pen at, it's perfect for my hand. But the the hooded nib, especially with this kind of with it with it posted, I think looks very, very nice. I think a traditional nib might make it a little too busy, at least um, in the context of this design. So I think it was an okay choice. I would have preferred a regular nib, but from a design perspective, I can certainly see why they went with a hooded nib. The price on these is very, very good as well. Uh, I initially saw these on Instagram and I was like, huh, you know, these are probably $25, something like that, maybe a little bit more. They're actually about 11 You can get them from eBay um, from a company called Kako. They have other pens as well through various sellers. You can definitely look into those. I'm, I'm not blown away by this pen, but it's, it's pretty good. I, I wouldn't be against buying another pen from them. But the price for $11 is really, really nice. And for that $11 price, you get the pen, you get a converter, and you get a decent package. Um, it says Kako Green. I don't know why the heck it says Kako Green on there. But one thing that I find interesting is on a lot of these cases, you'll find um, some bad English. This actually is kind of a decent slogan. It says, your right choice. That's not bad at all, honestly. It's kind of that frosted uh, plastic color that you're seeing with a lot of the Moon Man pens, if you're familiar with those. Although it is less textured, it's a lot more smooth. And these are just printed on, by the way. So you open it up, and you have the pen here. You have a converter here, and it does come with some cartridges, which is nice. Um, if you take this out, there's nothing there, but on the bottom, there is um, a kind of green label, which I'll show you as soon as I can get this back in. There we go. You can see that here. 
It just says retro classical fountain pen, and that's a bunch of writing in Chinese and a small diagram of the pen as well. And I'm assuming this is a manufacture date on here. I don't think it's an expiration date for the pen. I, I hope not. If so, it's already done for. No, but um, they have a website and all that stuff, which is this presentation, the attempt at a logo, a name, a brand, is so much more than you normally get out of Chinese pen companies. It's interesting, honestly. It, it's almost like they're trying to build a brand, which is different. It's it's a nice change of pace. It you know you can figure out more about the company. They actually have a website where they have pin models and things like that. It's exciting. I don't know about y'all, but I, generally when I buy a pin, if there's a brand name standing behind it, I feel a little bit more confident. So it's nice to see that from a company, especially coming in in that really really competitive ten ish dollar ten to fifteen dollar price range. And probably their biggest competition in that price range is. Moon Man. They have some amazing pens. Honestly, I'm I'm gonna be completely honest with you here. I prefer this pen. The nib is better. It's the design overall. I think is nice. It's it's interesting visually. But if I had to only pick one, I would probably go with this one. If I if I could only decide on one of these pens, it would be this one. It's just. There's a bit more there, design-wise, for me, and and the company. The fact that they're trying to have a brand, or at least it appears that way, is reassuring. And this pen has a lot more ways that you can fill it. As you saw from the packaging, it comes with a uh, two cartridges. It comes with a converter. And also, there's no metal in here, and there's no holes in here, so you can certainly eyedropper this. That's a nice little touch, because this will hold quite a bit of ink. And I think eyedroppered is probably where this pen belongs just between ink passing this little ink window which we'll touch on later I think an eyedropper uh, fill for this pen would probably be the best choice for most people there are a lot of very small very tightly wound threads they would be amazing with some silicone grease I almost wish they had included an o-ring just for that final extra little oomph to the seal just for some reassurance but it does tighten down very tightly. It was actually very difficult for me to undo the pen when I first got it. I had to get um, a good grip on it and really, really turn. It was the most secure a pen has ever been fixed, you know, section to the body-wise, at least for me. The size is nice as well. This is a, a pretty standard size pen. If you count in the hooded nib, depending on how you write, it's going to be a little short. As I said, I prefer to write with it posted. Posted, I think it's about a perfect size for me. And I really, really enjoy writing with it posted, which is different because a lot of the pens that I use, I typically prefer to not have them posted at all. On to the neutral. First thing up is the material. So the material is not bad, it's just like a plastic, but in this price range, it's not great because you have companies in this price range bringing out better looking materials. I, again, Moon Man with this gorgeous, like clear acrylic, it's really, really nice. This is just injection molded plastic. Oh, sorry about that. If you look around, not this particular model, this model is much more expensive, but Pen BBS has a lot of models in this $10 to $15 price range with a lot of really, really nice hand turned acrylics. Like this material is gorgeous compared to this. So I think the material that they're bringing is a little bit weak. It's not, you know, bad. It's not horrible. I, You really have to look for the injection molding lines, but there is a. Um, I forget what that, a blush, I think is what that's called, a gate blush or something like that, from where it was injection molded on both sides. That's something you're going to have to keep in mind. To be honest, I'm spending $10, I don't care, but if you're used to hand-turned acrylics at this price, that's not what you're getting here. So just keep that in mind. The ink window is a nice touch, but it's limited. Um, I do have ink in there right now, I have a converter as I showed you, but you can't really tell, and you certainly can't tell what the ink level's at and I couldn't tell if it were empty. If they were going to use this and make it useful for a converter, I wish they made it a bit longer, to be honest. Maybe double in length, that way you could see to something like there, at least, so you can kind of tell, oh yeah, I have a little bit of ink left. Where this really shines, though, is with an eyedropper, because you can tilt it to the side, and the ink will level out, and you'll be like, oh yeah, I'm halfway full, or I have a third, or however much you have in there. So the ink window is useful, but only if you eyedropper this pen. As far as converter or cartridge, I don't see it being of any use because I can't tell at all. 
you know, as far as as far as that goes. Last thing on the neutrals, the capping. Um, you start to feel resistance about here. Now, it doesn't stop until about here. So you start to feel resistance for about a quarter of an inch. But the problem is, I can cap it right here and leave it. And there's still some resistance pulling it off, putting it on. And it seems like that's the first natural stop. But the more force you apply, the farther down it goes. But you can easily over cap this. There's not a really nice secure stop. Like with um, the Gen Hao X450, the Pilot Metropolitan Lamy Safari, you're not getting that here. It's not even a really, really good friction fit like the Pilot E95S. It's, it's a bit sloppy. I'm not a huge fan of it. It is secure. It's not, you know, going to go anywhere. It's pretty tightly on there. But just keep that in mind that when you're capping this pin, it's going to be a little iffy to know whether or not you have it completely shut. It's just kind of up in the air. On to the dislike. Only one thing here, and it's one of my favorite aspects of the pin as well. Design-wise, I love this clip. Practicality-wise, it's garbage. This clip is so freaking stiff, it's not even funny. Like, it's, it's ridiculous. It is absolutely insane. Let me see if I can get a notebook over here and kind of slide it down over. It's pretty, pretty close in shade, a little darker on this one. But if you take it and you slide it down over thin material like this, it's fine. But the second you add some, some thickness to it, a shirt pocket, pants pocket, whatever, it's, well, that was a bit dramatic. My, my point being, it's very difficult to slide down over stuff, even though this ball should help it slide over material fairly well. This is extremely difficult to get in jeans. A shirt pocket, I have to pull the pocket tight and then kind of lift the clip and slide it down over it. It's, it's horrible. This clip is... It's bad, and because it's secured with such a small point, it moves back and forth pretty readily. It's very flimsy, at least side to side. So I could see you, I, I could probably snap off this clip fairly easily just turning it to the side. But as far as up and down pressure, I've tried to loosen it up by putting, you know, some thicker material in there and leaving it for a bit. Didn't help at all. This clip is useless, in my opinion. It looks really nice, though, but practicality wise, garbage. It's garbage. All right, on to the writing sample. So in here we have Pilot Robo Shizuku Amaero. It's a lot more blue than this pen is, but it's reliable ink, and I like using it quite a bit. So we have the Kako Retro. This is, again, an extra fine nib. Although, as I said, it writes a lot more like a Western fine to me. Between the flow and the width, you're not really going to get an extra fine line out of this, so keep that in mind if, if that bothered you at all. And the ink, as I just mentioned, is Pilot Iroshizuku Amaero. Really, really nice blue. Got this at the Atlanta Pin Show. And it's one of my favorite Pilot Iroshizuku inks. We have uh, about six of them, I believe, now. And this one's definitely in the top half of that, at least. <laughs> but it's it's a very very nice nib the flow is nice and wet I will say it's a hooded nib there's no flex it's steel nib there's definitely no flex it, so don't expect any of that but I'll show you um, what alignments and pressure looks like so we have a reverse riding line that one may be a bit more like an extra fine a normal line and then alignments and pressure and you can see there's little to no variation with this the nib just will not flex. It's it's a steel nib and it's hooded, so you can't really expect too much out of it. On to the conclusion. So my final say on this pen is buy it if you like the design. If you don't like the design or you're kind of lukewarm on the design, just skip it. There's nothing outstanding about this pen that makes it truly, truly amazing apart from the design at least to me some people may not like this at all i think this would look really nice on a desk or something like that but in terms of practicality and writing there's just better stuff out there for the price now that is not saying this pen is bad this pen's wonderful but the competition in this price range is really really tough and i think they would have to step up their game by offering more nib sizes or you know fixing the clip expanding the ink window they would have to fix a lot about this pen for me to recommend it above something like the M2 or, you know, the 
Gen Hell X450 even, I would probably use that pen more than I would this one. So that's that's about it on this one. It's it's okay. It's okay. Now, if you would ask me two or three years ago before the competition got really, really fierce in that Chinese pen $10 to $15 market, this would have been mind-blowing. Because when you compare this to, like, the Pilot Metropolitan, it's cheaper. It's lighter, which for a lot of people is, is a factor, especially in long-term riding. And the Pilot Metropolitan is now $18. A better converter that comes with it. The only thing the Metro really has going for it is the nib. And, in my opinion, the um, the build quality is a little bit better on the Metro. Not a ton, but a little bit. But the nib on the Metro and the options you can get with the nib, which are not many. It's literally like a fine and medium. But the nib is just so much better. It outperforms this nib. This nib performs well, but it's it's nothing surprising. It didn't blow me away. And the pen in general kind of left me unimpressed, apart from seeing pictures of it. So it's a nice design, but it's not really backed up by anything. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Um, if you like this, feel free to subscribe. Check out my other stuff. Check out my Patreon, blah, blah, blah. Um, if you have this pen or know someone who does, let me know how you feel about it if you kind of had the same lukewarm response that I did to it. It's just, I, I think they could do a lot more with this pen, and they just kind of half-assed it, for lack of a better term. Thanks for tuning in, everybody.